Good evening, everybody. Hey, I, I saw the stand this evening. I got a, uh, I got a phone call right probably 20 minutes ago. Um, Dale England that goes to our church some, he comes by and visits, and uh, little Dale, he's been here the last couple of Sundays, <clears throat> and I was with him last Thursday night, me and Terry, and uh, they just called me, the ambulance that just went by the church is Dale, and uh, he bought a, one of those Razor bikes and has uh, been in a real bad car accident. His mom said it's not looking good at all. And uh, they're taking him to UT Hospital. I'm going over as soon as service is over with. But how many knows God can move on that? And, uh, so I want us to do a corporate prayer. I appreciate Kimlin Heights Church of God being here tonight. Redemption Harvest being here. I appreciate everybody that's come. But how many knows that we can do a corporate prayer and God can move right there at UT Hospital? All right. So I want us to pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, that you move tonight. I ask, Lord, for uh, Dale, that you would touch his body in the name of Jesus. I pray every, in, in every weapon that the enemy meant for his back will turn it around to his good. In the name of the Lord, I pray for his healing. In Jesus' name, that you would bless him according to your word and according to your will. Give us a great service tonight and bless him. Pastor Doug tonight as he preaches the word of the Lord. In Christ's name we ask it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus. Well, I am blessed.
knows y'all can do better than that. Give it a hand for We're going to have a message to come. We're going to do a Sunday morning tithe and offering. While they do that, let's just let Gordon and them come on up and take the yeah. instruments. So glad to have them here. This is my family here. And uh, my family. Appreciate them being here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to do our Sunday night tithe and offering give as given unto the Lord. And uh, how many knows you'll be more blessed to give than to receive? Amen. Amen. Let's go, go ahead.
always got my back. All and right. I just appreciate him so much. Everything that he's done for me, he walks with me yeah. every single day. Uh, he goes with me yeah. through the valley. He leads me through it. He doesn't leave me there. That's right. I just thank him and I praise him.
says, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify who? God. Mother. The Father in heaven. Not to glorify us. Not to lift us up. Not that you'll see any extraordinary talent. You're not going to see that. But that he be lifted up. This little song is something that you all have heard your whole lives called This Little Light of Mine.
good singing, good singing. I told Pastor Nux over, I said, you got some talent in that church. He said, I just wish they could learn how to play something. <laughs> and then I went on to say, I could teach Gordon a couple of things, but on that piano. And I repented for that line spirit. <laughs> Gordon, come here for a minute. One of my favorite cousins right here. He's actually married to my cousin, our lady, but he's my cousin. He's had a change of heart for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I did to him one time before Pastor Doug comes to preach. I was selling cars at the Ford store. Gordon called me on the phone. He was a big, strapping young man back then. And he said to me, he said, I want one of those Mazda Miatas. He might as well said, I want a woman's convertible. <laughs> and he said, I want it black. I said, I got one. I said, when can you be here? He told me, and I priced it over the phone. He said, I'll be there to pick it up. I went over next door. I told her detail guys. I said, get that Mazda Miata, drop the top on it, wash that thing, leave the top down, and pull it right in front of the dealership. Gordon got there. I signed him up on the papers. He jumped in that Mazda and smiled going out of the thing, out of the parking lot. When he got home, he called me. He said, I'm going to kill you. I said, why? He said, I can't get the top down from my head. <laughs> That thing drove the wheels off there. That's a good car salesman right there. there you go. <laughs> I love my friend. Learn how to play that thing. It's awesome. Music is part of it. Good man, good family. They have a heritage and uh, a, a Pentecost in that family. I appreciate that. I'm honored to have this young man to come and preach for us. How many is going to pay attention? All right. All right. We want to respect the man of God. So I wanted him to come. Pastor Doug from Kimberlin Heights Church of God. Let's give him a, a good hand. It's good to see everyone out in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to thank Brother Joey for inviting us out. It was such a pleasure when you all came out and visited with us a month ago. And we're glad to be with you all tonight. And I'll warn you, I am not the preacher that Joey is. <laughs> That's okay. God didn't make us all the same. I'm a little more subdued than He is. He was telling me what a wonderful service you all had this morning. And I thank God for His power. When I was praying and getting ready to preach, I've been praying for a couple of weeks that God would give me what He wanted me to say to this church tonight. And I was working on my sermon, and I thought I had it all figured out. And then I believe it was Monday night, I was watching the news, and I saw a story that really disturbed me. Because it run home with the things that I had been hearing over the last few weeks and months. There's a great fear that is set into this land. You hear people talking all the time about, I'm so afraid of who wins the election and what's going to happen. The way that the world is headed. And as I was watching the news the other night, there was a story came on about a shooter scare in JFK Airport. Did any of y'all see that on the news back at the beginning of the week? Turns out that they were watching the Olympics in one of the waiting areas. And apparently when the starting pistol went off for a race that Usain Bolt was running in, some people heard that and they heard the cheering that was going on and they thought it was panic. And they literally had panic to spread across three terminals at that massive airport. Shut the airport down. There were people running out onto the tarmac. They were doing everything they could to get away. And that just brought something home to me about the spirit of fear that is in the world today. But how many of y'all know that God is bigger than any spirit of fear? As children of God, we should not be afraid to live in this world. Because I read in the Bible where it says, in the beginning God. Yes. And I know that He created everything here. That's right. And if I'm His child, I have nothing to be afraid of. Right. What's the worst thing that can happen to me? Right. I can go home? Yeah. That doesn't scare me at all. Amen. Because I am ready to go. Amen. Amen. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. As the old song says. Right. When they started singing, it's my desire. I got to thinking about Brother Ron. Yeah. Because I know that was one of his favorite songs. And he used to have Gordon sing that all the time. And you know, that just done something to me to know 
but he's up there in heaven waiting on us. So what do I have to be afraid of here in this world? If you have your Bible tonight, turn to Isaiah chapter 41. I want to read verses 1 through 10, and I want to focus on verse 10. Because it gives me hope. It tells me not to be afraid because my God is in control. I don't know who you all serve, but I serve the God. Right when you find it in the Bible, say amen. Right Isaiah chapter 41, beginning with verse 1, says, Keep silence before me. O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust of the sword, and as driven stubble to his bone. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. The isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. Drew near and came. They helped everyone his neighbor. And everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. And he that smootheth with a hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the sovereign. He has fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you give us. Lord, I thank you that you are alive and sitting on the throne tonight, Lord, that you are looking out for your people. And we have no reason to fear anything that comes against us because you are God and you are in control. Lord, I ask that you would be with us tonight. As we go through this time with you, Lord, just help us. Lord, help me to say what you would have me to say and help this congregation to hear what you would have me to hear. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fear not. I was talking to a lady at work the other day and she said, I am so afraid of what's going to happen. We have nothing to fear because God is in control. In verse 10, you're going to find that there are two commandments supported by five reasons. The two commands are Fear not, and do not be dismayed. Right. My God tells me that I have no reason to fear. Right. People around us are in fear. I've heard so many people say, I'm so scared of what's going to happen down in Rio during the Olympics. Because you have all the different nations come together. That would be a perfect place for a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. People are feared everywhere they go that something is going to go wrong. But my God is in control. Yeah. As always in the Bible, there are reasons for the commandments. God doesn't give a command and just leave you hanging, wondering why you were supposed to follow that command. And right here in verse 10, we can see that there are five reasons that we should follow the two commandments. The first one is, for I am with you. That's right. In other words, do not fear, for I am with you. The second is, I am your God. Do not look anxious on your God, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Yes. Surely I will uphold with my righteous right hand. That's right. In other words, God is with me. God is my God. God will strengthen me. God will help me. And God will uphold me. That's right. If God is on your side, who do you need? I'm not worried about who the president is. I don't care which one of them wins. But we need to pray for whoever's in leadership in this country. We need to get back to being a country that honors Israel. Because if we don't bless Israel, we don't stand a chance. We need to understand that God cares about His people. How many of y'all are a child of God? As a child of God, 
who cares about me? All right. They sung the song, His Eye is on the Sparrow. And if He watches out for the little, tiny sparrow, I know that He is watching out for me. Yeah, right. What do I have to fear? Yeah. So we need to understand the key to overcoming fear. It's not something that you can just read in a self-help book All and right. everything's going to be okay. Right. All right. You can't decide within yourself that I'm not going to be afraid anymore. We have to base it on the firm foundation of the Word of God right. and who He is. That's who we need to turn to. It's not Oprah. It's not Dr. Fiegel. Right. It's not any of the other people that are selling something that they want us to buy. Right. We need to turn to God. Yeah. The one who freely gave his only begotten Son, so that we may have a life yes. and have it more abundantly. Yes. The key to fearlessness is believing that God is your God. And He is with you and He will strengthen you and help you and uphold you. You need to understand the greatness of the God that you serve. Yes. In the first nine verses, it talks about the greatness of our God. The first thing we need to understand is that He is judge of all the earth. All right. In the first verse, when it talks about, that he's, God says to Coastlands, listen to me, to me in silence. And let the peoples gain new strength. Let them come forward. Let them speak. Let us come together for judgment. God is in control. Yeah, that's right. He is the one that is going to judge the nations. He is the one that sets up the nations and He's the one that tears down the nations. Yes. He is in control. And if you're getting anxious about the election and the things that are going on, don't worry about it. Because God is going to put who needs to be in power to fulfill His plan. Right. So many times people get so upset about those type of things and they begin to wonder, oh, what's going to happen? What's this going to mean for me? All I know is we're one day closer to home. All right. And God is going to do what is necessary yeah. to put everything in order for the return of His Son. Yeah. Right. And if it means putting the wrong person in our eyes in office, so be it. All I can say is, oh Lord, come with me. Yeah. Amen. But He is the one that judges the earth and everything in it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. He is the ruler of all rulers. Verses 2 through 3 says, Who has aroused one from the east? Whom he calls in righteousness to his feet. He delivers up nations before him and subdues kings. He makes them like dust with his sword. That's right. As the wind driven chaff with his bows. In other words, he's in control. Okay. Don't worry. Don't fear. He is in control. He's going to take care of it. He's going to do what is necessary. Yeah. He's going to do what's necessary to make people turn to Him. Amen. It says in the last days yeah. that there's going to be a great outpouring, a great revival, that people are going to start to come back. Yeah. Our country is in need yes, of a revival. Right. It is so refreshing to see this many people in God's house on a Sunday night. Yeah. I was noticing on the way out through here, Brother Jody, all the churches that we passed and all the empty parking lots. If you think that your attendance has been bad, you're not alone. I've been talking to many people and I keep hearing it's the same way everywhere you go, brother. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it if the church attendance is getting a little bit smaller. People just aren't going to church anymore. It may be true, but that concerns me. Yeah. <laughs> that people don't go to church anymore. Because they're missing the purpose of what we're here for. But God is going to set up the rulers and He's going to tear down the rulers because He is in control. He is the first. He is the last. He is the uncreated. He is Yahweh. In the beginning, God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. That means He is the first and He is the last. Come what may, He is still the one in control. And we have to be willing to follow Him. Next, He is the God who chose His people. It is so nice to know that I am chosen by God. Yeah. Amen. 
It's no accident that I'm here. It's no accident that I'm his. He gave me a choice, but he chose me. You are his. And he looks out for his children. He watches over us. He is in control. And he is always taking care of us. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. These glimpses, these four facts that we just looked about. That the, he's the judge of all the earth. He's the ruler of all rulers. He's the uncreated. He's the God who chose his people. Just helps to build up what happens here in verse 10. When we understand that God is in control. Why should we fear? Right. The God who judges all the earth and calls the coastlands to give account. The God who rules the rulers of history. The God who calls the nations of the earth into being, but into being because He is first among us. The God who calls His own people and makes Himself their God freely and graciously. That God says to us who believe, I am your God. Yeah, yeah. I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. Yes. My God is in control. And if we understand that, we begin to build upon the commands because we can put a therefore statement in the board. You know what a therefore statement means? When it says therefore, it means because of something else, you can do this. And because He is our God, we don't have to fear. Therefore, because I am the judge of all nations. Therefore, because I rule the rulers. Therefore, because I call nations into being. Therefore, because I choose freely my own. Therefore, because I, this great and sovereign God, am your God, and with you, will strengthen you, will help you and uphold you. Therefore, do not fear. <laughs> we need to quit being afraid. Yes, man. It seems that Christians, we are afraid to do what God has called us to do. We live in a land where everything is based on political correctness. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of political correctness. I'm tired of people being afraid to preach God's Word because it might offend somebody else. I'm sorry, I would much rather offend somebody and them realize that what they're doing is wrong and get straightened out. Then to pat them on the back and say, it's okay. God understands. God understands that if He said it was wrong, it is wrong. That's right. In this world that we live in, we're afraid that somebody's going to speak out against us. Oh, you don't want to go over to Brother Jody's church because he's been preaching that Bible. What? Oh, yeah. You don't want to go over there because... He's calling sin, sin. You want to go over to the other church where it doesn't matter what you do. The preacher says it's okay. And you're going to make it to heaven. It's time that Christians stand up. Quit fear the political system and fear the one that we shouldn't be in fear of. It's not a scared fear. It is a reverent fear that we need to have for God. Because He is holy. He is pure. And He is true. He is unchanging. He is God. And God alone is worthy to be praised. When we get back to what we truly need to understand, and we start telling people the truth. They're going to see their wicked ways and they're going to turn from. Amen. But before they're going to do that, the church needs to repent itself. Amen. For all the time that they've spent begging people, begging and pleading and telling them it's going to be okay, God understands. And tell them that God's word is true. Yeah. And they need to follow Amen. what He has said. Amen. We have no reason to fear the things that are going on in this world because He 
always the future. Right, amen. Right, amen. Our final ground for fearlessness. We need to take a stand. But if we'll hold on to this verse 10 here in Isaiah chapter 41 and really take it to heart and understand that He is in control, we'll understand that we have nothing to fear but honor Him and serve Him. If you want to overcome fear, just remember once again what God said. I am your God. I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you. That's right. Let me add one thing to that. He'll uphold you if you're right. Too many times people want God to uphold them in what is not right. All right. What is not His Word. My Bible hasn't changed. The words that were written by inspired men of God 2,000 years ago still hold true today. God hasn't changed His mind about anything. When He said it, He meant it. And it's time as Christians we start living it and telling other people that it is true. I encourage you to realize that God is greater than your personality. God is greater than your past experiences. So many times we get hung up on our past and that makes us afraid to go out and witness to people. Oh. But they knew me back when. That's a better reason right there. To go and witness to them because they knew the old you. If we will tell them what God has done in them and live a life that shows it, they will see that there is something different mm-hmm. and that there is hope for them. Yeah. Don't be afraid to do what He has called you to do. God is greater than your family origin. Hello. A lot of us want to say, well, they know my family. They know where I come from. There's no way they are ever going to listen to me. God knows my family. Yeah. Do you know what? I may still be part of the family that I've always been part of, Dave. I got an uncle sitting here tonight that I am so proud of. Mm-hmm. Years ago, he wasn't the good Christian that he is today. But thank God by his saving grace. Yeah. But I can show you a new man. And if it wasn't for that same grace of God, I wouldn't be the man that I am tonight either. I'm not perfect. I've got a long way to go. But one of these days, I'm going to get there. When He calls me from this breath to the next. One breath here. One breath there. Then I would have made it. Yeah. But until then, I had to keep climbing up the rough side of that mountain that they were sitting about. I've got to keep striving to make it home. I don't have to fear about the things that are happening in this world. I have to trust Him. And I have to do my best to tell someone else that God is real. And He's coming back. As Christians, we have no reason to be afraid if we trust and believe in Him. And I'll leave you with these two verses tonight. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, and peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. And 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And when the devil goes telling you that you don't know what you're talking about, that you've just gone crazy, take him back to that scripture and remind him, no, my God is in control. And when he saved me, he delivered me, and I don't have to be afraid of you anymore, devil. So if you're afraid tonight, of anything, 
that is happening in your life, just turn it over to Jesus <coughs> and let Him take control. And He will see you through. Amen. Because He is God and He is great to be praised. Amen. I agree with everything you said, Pat. That makes it a good message. I was thinking while you were preaching, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, feel like God doesn't have His way if somebody politically gets in an office that we are against or we're not for, we don't vote for. I got to thinking about how did Pharaoh come to that throne of Egypt? Bible said there arose a Pharaoh who Joseph did not know, or did not know Joseph. But in 400 years of bondage, a total of really 430 years of bondage, everything that the enemy meant for Joseph's bad, his family's bad, God turned that around to his good. Every, every time they mixed mortar for them bricks out of straw, the Bible said that God blessed them. And I don't care how hard the devil puts it on us, we can still be blessed. How many is blessed tonight? We can still be blessed. It don't really matter who's going to get in office. <coughs> Trump does. <coughs> it don't matter who gets in office. Preachers say don't get political in the pulpit. Listen, I'm not voting for a baby killing homosexual. You get upset with me, get on upset. I don't I ain't worried about it. You go to Dutch church. Get upset with him. He'll tell you the same thing. You come back over here. But the re listen, until the church stands up, we can't turn this thing around. We need to have a revival. If there's gonna be a revival, they ain't gonna start in that world. They don't know nothing about it. There's going to be a revival. It starts in the house of God. And it'll start with men getting back in this pulpit and getting the backbone, backbone about them and preaching the word again. I preached this morning on the rain. You sung a while ago. I preached this morning on the rain. That rain of revival that we need in the church. How many is ready for that rain? I want them to sing tonight. Close out the service. The altars are open. If you'd like to come and pray around these altars, come on, church. Good time to just get in here together as two churches, as one church. Let me say it that way and just pray around these altars. Can we do that? Let's stand. Come on, church. Come in and pray.
just glad Kimberlyn Hodge came out to be with us. If you're here tonight, we welcome you to the house of God. Glad you're here. Yeah. Come back and be with us. If you uh, don't go to Kimberly House, come back and be with us. And uh, jump in here. We need your help. Amen. And so God's moving in this church. We we had uh, Alva went and preached a homecoming this morning at Bobby Stevens Church. He said he had one saved. A man entered, walking off the street wearing a jacket, a coat, a big thick coat, and asked them, what kind of church is this? And when they asked him, why would you ask that? He said, well, I've been to five or six other churches and they've all asked me to leave when I took my jacket off because I've got tattoos on, on me. And they talked him into staying and told him we're a Pentecostal church. And... Uh, they got to singing and about 30 or 40 minutes into the service, they said he ran to the altar and got born again. I'd hate to be, I'd hate to be the pastor of those four or five churches that told him to leave. Man, if I told everybody around here that he's got tattoos, I wouldn't have nobody. I wouldn't have anybody. But, uh, well, Randy, I'd have Randy. <laughs> But I wouldn't be here. <laughs> You'd be by yourself, really. But uh, we all need each other, don't we? I appreciate it, young man. You done good. You done good. This is a special, special family. If y'all that don't know it, Doug had a kidney had kidney failure and uh, needed a kidney. Was on a transplant, and uh, his wife gave him one of her kidneys. That just happened a few months ago. And uh, he's recovered good from it. She recovered good from it. And uh, that's just the type of family. You love him, you just love him, don't you? You think of me. Yeah. <laughs> love y'all. Listen, Ronnie is going to the back door with the offer plate. We're going to do a love offer tonight for Pastor Doug. Thankful he came tonight. We're going to bless his ministry. Is that okay? Bless his house. Uh, it's what the Lord teaches us to do. Take care of the ox, treads the corn. I don't like that saying. Because uh, I'm not an ox. <laughs> so let me say it the other way. A workman is worthy of his hire. And uh, I appreciate him coming tonight. So give in the offering if you can tonight. If you can't, we understand. And we'll take care of it. God's good. We love you. Listen, for those that don't know it, we are happy. We, we announced our homecoming is next Sunday. We're changing that. We had a slight issue uh, with uh, some musical stuff. And we're going to change. So we're, it's going to take us a, a little while to get some stuff carried out and done right. So what we're going to do is we are having homecoming the third Sunday of September. The third Sunday of September is homecoming. All right? And so, don't forget that. If you know anybody that goes here, call them and tell them, don't cook for next Sunday. If they cook, it's got to go to my house. <laughs> so, so, don't cook next Sunday. The third Sunday of September will be homecoming here at the church, okay? I love you. God bless you. See you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock.